Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a knitter and maker living in Seattle, Washington. And today I'm going to talk to you about everything that I worked on in the month of January. Um, I feel like after kind of a slow December, I actually got a lot done in January and I'm really proud of where we've gotten to. I think it's like a little combination of nesting because I'm about to have a baby and just like new year, new energy. Um, I started a new job, which is kind of strange to do right before you're about to have a baby, but it's a little bit more relaxing. Like it doesn't take up as much as my ment of my mental space as my old job does did. So I have some more time for things that I want to do, um, getting ready for the baby and everything. So I'm feeling good. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to talk to you about my knits. Um, I'm wearing my air tee today, which if you follow, if you watch my last video, which was everything I knit in 2023, I talked a little bit about how I hadn't worn it very much and I felt kind of sad about it, but I'm wearing it today. It's not the most practical for me generally because my belly is so big at this point that it hangs out of the bottom of the t-shirt, but you can't see, so it works for today's purposes. Um, and I really like it. So I guess that is a kind of a good segue into the first thing that I want to talk to you about, which isn't really a finished object, but it's kind of a finished object. In that video, I talked to you about my Frankie Genser, which I had knit in like August or September, maybe. I was working on it in August, I know, because I was working on it when my mom was here for Flock. Um, and in that video, I was like, oh, I think it's a little short. I need to add some length. And then I was like, I should just do that. I've been putting it off for months. I feel bad that I've never worn this sweater. Um, so I did, I added some length to the body of my Frankie Genser. I added, you can kind of see, the grafting job that I did is not my best work. <laughs> you can kind of see, I used noodley yarn to do the grafting and so the stitches aren't super even. Um, but if you're not looking very closely, I don't think it's noticeable. And I added probably about two, two and a half inches of length to the body, which just brings it to a length that I think is a little bit better for me. Now that I've knit, a lot of sweaters I know that generally I like a, I like a length that's between like 54 and 60 centimeters on me that's a good full length and so I think we got to 60 with the new length on this and I reblocked the whole garment which is great because I stretched out the ribbing a little bit I think it could still use a little bit more stretching I didn't use pins or anything um, maybe I'll wash and block it one more time or just steam these cuffs out because I want them to basically be the same width as the arms um, but I blocked the bottom hem out quite a bit and I'm overall much happier with this. I'm excited to wear it. It still doesn't really work with my belly, <laughs> but I won't have a belly, which is kind of sad here in the next couple weeks. So I can wear it after and that will be nice. Um, so yeah, that's my fixed Frankie Genser. I know I'm usually a fall fixing kind of gal, but... There it is, and it's a little wrinkly from not being stored properly. So I'm gonna fold that up nicely and put it with the rest of my sweaters, and then I can wear it and enjoy it, hopefully here pretty soon. So yeah, that's finished object dish number one, revisited object. Um, let it be a testament that you can fix things anytime, not just in the fall. Um, great, okay. Finished object number two is, I guess, the first thing that I finished in January. I was feeling like I hadn't knit very much for the baby, which was making, making me a little sad. I feel like I hadn't done enough for her. Um, so I decided to make another little sweater and pants set. I had made her the Ellen's Coming Home set back in September. And then I made her, which is like a zero to, I made that the newborn size. And then I had made her a cardigan, which is like a zero to six month size. And I was like, okay, well she needs something zero to three months that she can wear. So I decided to make her a little set and this is kind of inspired by the Seaside set by Petite Knit, but I did not use that pattern. So there's a sweater, a little sweater and some little pants. They're so darling, I can't wait to put her in them. These pants are the Smarty Pants, which is a free pattern from Pearl Soho in the zero to three month size. And I used the Sun Descarn Sisu for this which I had tried to use for a baby net previously un and unsuccessfully. So I'm excited, I'm happy that I got to use them for something cute. I still have more of that yarn left over than I wish that I did. So I'm gonna make her like a little matching bow to go with this little outfit, but I haven't gotten there yet. But anyway, I have a little bit left over, like probably, I had 100 grams of the yellow. I This only took like barely a 50 gram ball, which is way less meterage than the pattern estimates. I don't know if it's just me, 
but I feel like a lot of the time I end up using significantly less yardage or like yarn than the pattern calls for. And I kind of find it annoying <laughs> because I'm trying to use up all the yarn that I have. And so I'm and starting a pattern in a size that like is estimated to use up all the yarn that I have. And then I end up with like 60 to 100 meters extra. I find it very frustrating. So I don't know what there is to be done about that, but maybe I, it's <laughs> for me, it's either like I play yarn chicken and I barely have enough to finish. Or I have to make modifications to make the yarn that I have work, or I try and like be pick a size that's appropriate to the amount of yarn that I have. And then I end up with a ton left over. I don't know what the best way to solve that problem is, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, so yes, these are the Smarty Pants by Pearl Soho. They are knit top down. Um, and they're very simple. I really like them. They're very cute. They're not too dissimilar from the petite knit ones that I bought in the Ellen's Coming Home set where you do like a little channel and then knit down and then split for the legs. Um, I did two by two ribbing on these. The pattern calls for one by one. I just like two by two ribbing, but I didn't think about it very clearly because this has one by one ribbing. So they, I should have just done one by one on the pants, but whatever. Um, you do a little eye cord tie at the waist. There's no elastic in here. So um, there's a cute little tiny eye cord in here. I was worried about yarn. So I made the eye cord kind of short and I wish I had made it a little longer now, but it's long enough that it will tie fine. Um, the only thing that I had an issue with was that in these is that I somehow miscounted my stitches and I had gotten all the way down to where I was about to split for legs and realize that the middle back where you make increases to accommodate the diaper bum. Um, there's a lot of pants that use short rows. This one uses increases. It was not in the middle. It was like shifted two or three stitches to the side. And I thought it was gonna, I don't know. i spent like an hour trying to decide if it was gonna bother me or if it was fine. And I decided that it was gonna bother me, but I had just done all of this knitting and I didn't wanna rip it back. So I ended up, you can kind of tell, laddering down like the entire back of the pants and shifting the, the increases over. Um, and I tried to kind of like, you can see, I tried to try to try to kind of like even out the tension from the laddering and it's not super noticeable. It's kind of noticeable. I, she's a baby. Like, I don't think it's going to matter. And I've decided that I'm not going to let it bother me, but I still think that I made the right choice to ladder than to like frog and re-knit this whole thing. Cause these didn't take very long. I knit these in like, I don't know, four days maybe, but I just didn't want to have to re-knit this huge section. So um, I did the laddering and it worked out. They're still like somehow off by like one or two stitches, but it's less noticeable. So I just left it. Um, and yeah, these are the little pants, the legs, excuse me, the legs have decreases in them and then this nice generous ribbing at the bottom. So if she ends up being kind of small, I can just fold them up and they will still be very darling. And yeah, those are my little smarty pants. I think they're very cute and I'm excited to put her in them. I just, they're so cute and tiny. Um, and then the matching sweater was more of a improv improvisation than the pants. The pants I just pretty much followed directly to pattern. Um, but this, I wanted to do the little side placket buttons, very much inspired by the seaside set, which is a pattern from Petite Knit. Um, and I have the Ellen's Coming Home set, which is knit in a DK weight yarn. And the seaside set is knit in a fingering weight yarn. And obviously this yellow yarn is a sock yarn. It's fingering weight. I wanted to use it for this project, but I didn't really want to have to buy the seaside set for it. Cause I had already made pants in fingering weight for free that were fine. Um, and I looked for a couple different, I liked this like half placket on the front. That was what I really wanted to do. It's the half placket and the stripes. Um, and I looked for a couple free patterns that had it, but I, they just weren't, I, the one that I found wasn't super easy to understand. So what I decided to do in the end was just do some gauge math. And I ended up using the Ellen's coming home set as a guide, but I just did it in a fingering weight yarn. So I made it, I think in the largest size, I used the stitch counts from the largest size of the Ellen's coming home set um, to get a zero to three month size sweater in fingering weight yarn. Um, and that's the Ellen's coming home sweater has a button placket all the way down the side of the cardigan. Like it, it's a full cardigan. So what I ended up doing, I kind of adjusted the buttonhole spacing on that pattern and I knit it with the largest stitch counts to here. And then I just kind of knit the two button bands together 
not sure that you can see, but there's like a however many stitch button placket on each side of this cardigan that you knit flat and do the raglan increases. And then I just knit the button plackets together here at the bottom and kept going in the round. So I think it worked out really well. I'm happy with my experiment and I think it turned out really cute. I like these buttons a lot. I got them just at my local um, creative reuse thrift store, which is called Seattle Recreative. Um, I think they're really cute. And overall, it turned out really well. I did the striping sequence a little differently than the Seaside Sweater as well. That one has like, I think, thinner color stripes and wider contrast, no, thinner contrast stripes and wider main color stripes. But the yarn that I was using, I was worried I was gonna run out of, and I did run out of. <laughs> this white that I used is a non-super wash, kind of like sport weight yarn. It's the Lamb's Pride Sport or something. I used it for my spot sweater that I made in 2022. Um, and I had, I didn't even weigh how much I had of it. I was just like, I'm just gonna use this. It should be fine. I ended up running out, which, and so I had to, uh, but I did the whole yoke, the whole body and most of the sleeves with what I had. So I'm not sure that I can even tell where I had to change. Okay, it's right here. So for this sleeve, I'm not sure that you're gonna even be able to tell, but this is the last stripe in the Lamb's Pride. And then I just moved to a white superwash sock yarn after that. So it's very subtly noticeable. The white, the sock yarn is like less bleached than the Lamb's Pride. So you can kind of tell if you're looking super closely. I think I was able to eke out, yeah. The only the, la the last three stripes on this sleeve are a different yarn. So you can like kind of tell that this stripe is a little lighter, like a pure white, and this is more of an off-white cream. But it's really not noticeable enough for me to care. Again, it's a baby sweater that she's only gonna be able to fit into for a couple months. Um, and f overall, like if I didn't point it out to you, I don't think it would be very noticeable. I'm a little worried that the cuffs are kind of tight, but I can always redo those if I need to. I tried to do a stretchy bind off and I'm not sure that it worked, but it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with how this little set came out. I think I ended up doing three color stripes. So three row, three row stripes, three rows of yellow, three rows of white. And I'm not super worried. Well, maybe I should. <laughs> in hindsight, probably should have done this whole thing in a super wash yarn because like the drooly parts of babies are up by their neck and it can stain. But it's fine. <laughs> She'll be fine. Um, I think it'll still be cute. There are plenty of baby clothes knit all over the world that are not used in super wash yarn. And I'm not worried about the fact that this is like half super wash and half not. Um, Honestly, I'm glad that the pants are super washed more than the sweater because if she poops in these, I can put them in the washing machine. But this, I if it's just drool or spit up, like that's easier to wash out. So there's my little set. I think it's adorable. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, I want one for myself. It's so cute and so cozy. And I'm so excited to put her in it. She's coming any day now and I can't wait. So that's my little finished object number one. I think I did this whole set in like a week or a week and a half. It was really fast. It was really fun. So this, baby knits aren't just so satisfying because they're super, super quick. Um, so after I finished that, I was thinking that she didn't have enough hats. So I knit her a little hat. This is the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho, which is, and I ended up marling mine. This is the smallest little baby size, which is pretty big, I think. I think it's gonna be big for her as a newborn, but she can wear it as she gets older. Um, and I used two yarns marled together for this. These are some yarns that I bought right after I found out that I was pregnant. I was at a yarn store in Texas and they were on sale and I for like $5 each and I bought them. The problem is that they're not, um, they were like a weird quantity. Um, so it wasn't really enough to do something with like to stripe them, I couldn't figure it out. So I ended up just marling them. Um, and they are, what's, I'm looking at the yarn. It's the Classic Elite Yarns Fresco, which is an Angora, wool, and alpaca blend. 60% wool, 30% alpaca, and 10% Angora. Um, and I used probably about 60 grams of each ball. So I have 40 grams left of each. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I was thinking I could make her some matching mittens, but I don't know that she's gonna need mittens. So I've just put it in my scrap drawer for now. 
but I think it's super cute. It's like a minty green and a white marl. Um, and I just think it's super cute and it'll be so cozy and she'll look so hip and chic with this. I think I knit this in like 24 hours. It was super fast and fun and I'm really happy with it. I knit it exactly to pattern with the little spirally decreases on the top and everything. Super fast. I knit the needle size that I called for. I don't know that my gauge is right, but I think it is. I think I measured it and it was fine. So there's just a little hat for her. It's super thick because it's um, two sport weight yarns held together. The pattern calls for DK, so it's like pretty chunky and heavy. Like this is 120 grams of yarn for a baby beanie. That's pretty hefty. So anyway, it's really cute. I like it a lot. I wish I had one for me. I wish I had enough yarn that we could do matching, but I don't. So she'll just have to have a special one for herself. It's very cute. I like it a lot. Um, okay. Then my next finished object is that I did three more blocks for my Stella quilt quilt. Um, if you missed my last video, I make using the Stella quilt cushion pattern from Penrose Knits, Laura Penrose, to make a quilt blanket for my baby. Um, so it's the pattern is written to be for a cushion, but I've made some modifications to make the blocks smaller and I'm going to sew them together um, to make a blanket. So I have six now, which I'm, I'll just put in a picture. It's easier than me <laughs> holding it up. Um, of how I'm going to lay them out. I'm basically going to alternate between the majority green green blocks and the majority white blocks based on a pattern, um, a quilt pattern that I saw on Etsy that I really liked. So yeah, I have six. This is obviously not going to be done before she gets here because she's coming in the next two to three weeks. Um, but I have been working, I started with this in December, so I've been doing about three blocks a month, which is pretty good. So I think if I can do three more blocks in February, 12 blocks is like a decent size that she could start using at least like in her stroller or her on her lap in the car seat when we're going places and then i'll just keep knitting blocks over the time and adding it and making the blanket bigger until i run out of yarn so six blocks is pretty good these are it takes me about it takes me about a week to do a block which sounds kind of crazy because they're not that big they're about nine inches square but each of these little blocks has multiple ends to weave in and you, it's just like there's a lot <laughs> of detail that goes into one of these um and they're beautiful and I'm really happy that I'm doing it but it is just kind of time consuming so I'm really happy to be making progress on this I need to start another one so that I can keep going and get as many done as possible before she gets here but six blocks so far is pretty good and um Laura is actually writing up like a blanket pattern for this an actual pattern for a blanket right now and she shared on Instagram the other day that she had decided to do a crochet join for her blocks and I was originally thinking I was going to do mattress stitch but a crochet join would be so much easier so that's probably how I will join them I've only blocked one of these blocks I need to block the rest of them I'm just a little bit worried about color bleeding so um I don't know if you can tell I think this is the one that I've blocked I think yeah you can just kind of tell that the green bled into the white a little bit the white is more creamy on this than it is on this i'm just a little bit worried about that bleeding so i need to do a little test block and see if i put some vinegar in the water if that will help the colors to not bleed but and then i should start steaming them together frankly so that i can just at least have some blanket for her when she gets here it can be like a play mat on the floor until it's big enough to be an actual blanket so yeah, these are both super wash yarns. The green is Filatura di Crosta Zara, which I over dyed to get this kind of greeny bluey color. And then the white is Regia Sock Yarn Undyed, which I actually used this Regia Sock Yarn to do the rest of the little sleeves on this guy. Um, but I'm holding a double because it's fingering weight and this is DK. So yeah, that's, that's an update on my blanket. It's coming along and I need to start putting it together, really. Okay, what's next? Um, I'll show you a little gift that I received from a friend. This is the only acquisition I have this month. I didn't buy any new yarn, um, but my friend made me this sweet little gift for the baby, so I'll show that to you. Um, she made me this little bonnet and mitten set, which is so cute. I don't know, I think it's a petite knit pattern, but I'm not for sure. She does a lot of petite knit patterns. 
um, but it just has this little lace on it and this beautiful deep green color, which is very up my alley. And then these teeny tiny little mittens. I'm pretty sure these are knit in Sunday Scar and Sunday. She, my friend does a lot of knitting in that yarn as well. So I don't know, I think they're so cute and I'm not sure how many times she'll even wear these before she grows out of them, but they're very cute. And I'm excited to put her in them. They're so darling. There's just something about baby knits. They're so sweet and precious. So that's a little set that my sweet friend gave me. So thank you for that. And then works in progress. I really only have one active whip right now besides my blanket, which I don't have an active block going. So this is project that I'm about to show you is what I've been working on for most of the last week or so. I want to say I cast it on pretty recently and I'm working through it pretty fast, which is nice. I cast it on, yeah, about a week ago and I'm probably will finish it in the next week. So that's really exciting. Um, this is my second Amy Slipover by Sennes Garn, which I am making in Hillesvog Ask, which is a yarn that I bought at the Hillesvog Mill in Norway when I was there in 2022. And it's a fingering weight, 100% lambs, Norwegian lambs wool, or Norwegian wool. I don't, I'm not sure that it's lambs wool, but it's a, a, a fingering weight. It's a sport weight. It's like 315 meters per 100 grams. So like a pretty heavy sport, um, but it's a two ply. It's fairly rustic. And I bought this in, so in the Hillesvog mill, when, if, and when you get to go there, there is like a downstairs area that's a normal retail shop. And then upstairs is where the mill is. So you can see the machines like carting the wool and spinning it, it's really cool. And they also have kind of like a little sale section up there. And in that section, they had two balls of the ask in this color, which I love. It's a beautiful kind of like petroleum blue color. It really reminds me of dusty petroleum blue from Knitting for Olive, very similar color to that. And so they only had two skeins, so I bought them both because I really liked them. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to make with them. I didn't really want to make like a t-shirt. I really honestly wanted to make a sweater, but it's just not enough to make a sweater. And I didn't want to hold it with mohair because Something about like these really special, this is a special yarn obviously, and something about, like I just don't wanna change the texture of a special yarn by adding a mohair to it. Like I want it to be special on its own. And I don't know why I'm like that, but it, I am. So anyway, I have had it in my stash for over a year now, year and a half, almost two years actually, um, trying to figure out what to make with it. And I made the Amy Slipover by Sunnis Garn fall of 2022 in a merino and a mohair and I love it and I wear it all the time. It's maybe one of my most worn pieces of knitwear and I've worn it a ton, especially when I'm pregnant because it's adjustable and it's really easy to wear over things. Um, it works really well over dresses, but it works really well over like a, like a crisp white shirt for work. Um, so I've worn it a ton and I was struck with the epiphany to make another one with this yarn because I should have enough. I made the Amy Slipover the brown one that I have, which I'll put a picture of here, I think I was trying to estimate how much yarn I used because the main color merino that I used was like a reclaimed yarn and I have no idea how much of that I used, but I did hold it with a mohair. And I wanna say that I had bought five balls of the mohair and I have left like two and a half balls of the mohair. So I used three and a half balls of the mohair and it's the, it's the drops kid silk. So it's about 212 meters per grant per ball, which means I used 650, 700 meters of that yarn in my first Amy slipover, which has a really big folded collar and they're really long ties. And so I was thinking that if I modify the Amy slipover to have a normal collar and maybe did something different on the ties, I could be able to get it with 630 meters of yarn. And I'm very confident that I will be able to because I'm halfway down the front and I still have most of the second ball of yarn and a little bit actually of the first. So this is how far I've gotten. I've done the entire back panel and I have picked up, I've done about half of the front panel and the neckline. And I'm making some significant modifications to this the second time around because I've made it before and I wear it all the time and I know how it fits and I wanted to make it fit me a little bit better. So the first thing I did, I did the back panel basically to pattern. There's only one size of this pattern, so I'm just doing the one size. Um, my gauge is off by one stitch. I think it's a 23 stitch per inch pattern. I'm at 22 stitches. 
And I thought that I had gotten gauge like spot on with the other version I did, but I actually was like quite off. I think I, that one's like a 20 stitch gauge. So it's all over the place, but I was okay with this one being a little narrower because I want it to, my other one kind of drops it to a weird point on my sleeve, not like a weird point, but just like not where I would prefer it to drop. So if this one is a little narrower, I think that'll be nice. But anyway, I cast on and knit the back pretty much to pattern. I knit about two centimeters longer of plain stockinette before starting the ribbing, and then about two centimeters longer on the ribbing before casting off. Because the one thing I don't like about my other version is that it just feels like it's kind of short and it feels like it's awkwardly short, especially in the back. So I wanted to add some length to the back. I ended up adding about four centimeters. I still think it might be a little short, excuse me, I still think it might be a little short, but I will address that when I come to it. Um, if I wanna go back and add some more length to it or not. Um, so that was the back. The only modification I did on the back was adding four centimeters of length, two centimeters of stockinette and two centimeters of rib. And then I picked up for the front and this is, the front is where I've made most of the modifications. <laughs> so in the pattern, there's like, a, um, you can see there's this kind of like um, garter tab ridge, decorative piece on the edge. Um, and in the original pattern, you pick up for the shoulders, like it's a really wide neckline, which I think is fine in the original pattern because it has that big folded collar. It kind of, it doesn't make the neckline feel super wide, but because I wasn't doing the big folded collar, I didn't want to have a super wide neckline. And there's just, it just looks a little awkward to me the way that there's like a really skinny little shoulder piece and then this big chunky ribbing. I don't like it. So I, even in my original version, picked up a few extra stitches. I picked up a few more in this one. I picked up 10 additional stitches on each side um, instead of on the, the other one I had picked up six. So I, it's quite a bit wider in the shoulders, which was my first modification. And then I decided to add some short rows because on my original version, the shoulder seam sits right on top of my shoulder and I just generally don't prefer that. I like when the shoulder seam sits like right along the back of your shoulder, like just over the back of your shoulder. I find that a better fit. I feel like it's more comfortable. I feel like it lays nicer. Um, and so I added some short, a little wedge of short rows, which I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see, but I added a, just a little wedge of short rows on the shoulder so that it will sit nicer along the shoulder. So I envision this sitting, like if this is my back, that the back seam, which you can't, see super well. There's also a lot of puckering happening on this. I need, I meant to block it before showing it to you, but I didn't. Um, the back seam is right here. And so this little wedge of short rows just helps it come over the shoulder in a nicer way. So like when I'm wearing it, I envision the back shoulder seam to sit further back on my shoulders. And then the short rows will just help bring it over my shoulder in a nice way and help the collar lay nicely. So that is what I'm envisioning for this. We'll see if it <laughs> works out that way. Um, but that was the first modification was adding a little bit of short rows to the shoulder to kind of help with the fit. And then um, my next big modification was that the pattern tells you to do the increases for the neck on the shoulder edge, which actually I'm just gonna show you my other version so you can see. So this is my original Amy slipover. You can see that there, the shoulder edge is just an edge, there's no short rows. And then when you pick up and do the increases, you do them on the on the neck or on the shoulder edge instead of the neck edge, which I think is just kind of strange. <laughs> I'm not sure why it is that way, um, but I don't like it. I feel like it doesn't lay quite nicely. And there's just something about it that I don't like. So what I decided to do was to move those increases, the neck shaping, which is what it's basically supposed to be from the shoulder edge to the neck edge. Um, so I've done them here along the neck edge instead of out here. You can kind of see, I'll show you again on the other version. Here they're on the neck edge. And here, they're on the shoulder edge. You can kind of see right here. It's hard to see in this color, in this light, but they're on the shoulder edge, which I just think kind of creates a strange shape. So I moved them to the neck edge, which I'm very glad I did. Um, the other thing that I did, <laughs> was because I wanted the shoulder to lay further back on my shoulder, I did some more knitting in stock. Um, so you can see that there's like, here, a pretty good chunk of straight knitting before the neck increases start. Where on this one, 
I don't know that you're going to be able to see very well in this dark, really dark color, but it's quite a lot less straight knitting before the increases start. And I did that just to help it lay better over my shoulders um, and to pull the neck into a good place with just this double folded crew neck instead of the turtleneck. Um, and yes, so I did about an inch and a half on the neck and I've just sewn it down. I need to block it to make sure it's gonna fit nicely and everything, but I think it is. Um, so I'm really pleased with my modifications. I feel like they actually look really nice. Um, so now I'm just knitting, knitting, knitting flat um, down the front until I decide to start doing the armhole increases, which you do kind of on the outside edge as well. Just makes it fit a little nicer on the front. So I'm just deciding um, how long I want the front piece to be. Generally when you want the seam of your shoulder to sit further back on your shoulder, you do the front piece a little bit longer than the back piece. So I'm trying to decide, I need to try this on again, frankly, just to see how it's gonna fit. Um, but we're getting there, we're getting close to having, uh, to getting ready for the, the body increases. So it's going well. I'm really pleased, honestly, overall with this. I'm pleased with the modifications that I made. I feel like they're gonna make it fit the way that I want it to and look the way that I want it to. And um, yeah, so the next thing I need to decide what to do is what to do about the ties, which will very much depend on how much yarn I have left. Um, but I think I'm gonna have quite a lot of yarn left. This is taking up much less yarn than I expected it to. So I think my order of operations is gonna be to finish the front like down to just before the ribbing and measure and decide if I wanna add a little bit more length to the front and back before adding the ties. Um, so I could do that if I want to. And then I, the ties on the original are kind of a wide band of ribbing that go up and up both armholes. And then you have these really long ribbed ties, which take a lot of yarn. So depending on how much yarn I have, I may end up doing an I cord on the shoulder into the ties um, or just doing the ties themselves in an I cord. So I've kind of been looking at inspiration from another Sun Scarn slipover pattern, which looks like this. I think it's called the Hella slipover, which is knit in like a fisherman's rib and it has ribbing on the shoulders, but the I cord, the ties are I cord, which just takes significantly less yarn than ribbing. So I could do it that way. The only problem that I didn't realize is that on the Hella slipover, I've been, I was like looking through people's projects. I don't have the pattern for it, but I'm just trying to do some sleuthing. I think that one is knit from the bottom up. And so another thing that I don't love about the original Amy slipover is that after you do the ties, there's not really anything, any finishing on this bottom edge. So on, from the armhole down, there's no finishing on the outside which is fine, but I think it just looks a little bit odd to have that really wide band of ribbing and then nothing. So I noticed that on the Hella slipover, there is some ribbing that goes up from the bottom, but I think that one is knit bottom up. So you do it, you knit that until here and then you put the stitches on hold and then um, knit the rest and then pick up from the top down and you pick up those extra stitches. That's my understanding. I'm not sure that I'm explaining it very well, but so I'm trying to decide if I wanna do a similar thing on this. I do kind of want some finishing on this edge. So if I do an I-cord, I'll just do an I-cord, but I could either do ribbing like in the Hella Slipover or I could do double knit, which is what Petite Knit does on her most recent slipover pattern, the one with the buttons. I don't remember what it's called, but it is very cute. And I also considered that if I don't have enough yarn for ties on this, I could just do like a thin ribbing or a thin double knit all the way down and then just put a button. I think I would rather do the ties though because it just makes it more adjustable. Um, so stay tuned for next month to figure, out, to figure out what I decide. But overall, I'm really happy with this. I think it's very cute. I don't think I wanna do a super wide ribbing if I do end up doing one on here. We'll see. It's gonna just come, it's gonna end up being a question of how much yarn I have and how I'm feeling at the moment. So that is it for my Amy slipover. I'm trying to do a pretty good job of documenting the alterations that I'm making on my Ravelry page. So if you wanna make this 
in a style that's closer to how I'm making it, you can look there. Um, yeah, that's my main whip at the moment. It's pretty mindless, which is nice. And I was kind of like not looking forward to it for a long time because of the flat, the knitting back and forth, but it's actually really not been that bad. And my tension is good. There's not a lot of growing out. So overall, I'm quite pleased. And hopefully by the next time I speak to you next, this will be done. Pretty sure it will be. I also don't know when the next time I will speak to you is because again, I'm having a baby any day now. So that's gonna take up a good amount of my time. But yes, that is my current work in progress. Um, I did actually swatch for one more thing. I swatched, this is a swatch and a pocket for the Miles shirt jacket, which is patterned by Ozetta, um, that I bought yarn for when I was on a trip to Europe last fall. I bought Manchalopes by Wool Dreamers in this lovely medium brown color. And I made the little pocket swatch because I was considering casting it on. And then my gauge in the pocket swatch is off. And so I'm trying to decide what size to cast on in the pattern. So I believe the pattern calls for a 14 stitch gauge. And I think I have a 16 and a half stitch gauge, or I think it calls for a 15 stitch gauge and I have a 16 and a half stitch gauge here, which I feel like this is a big enough swatch to be pretty honest about. Um, like it's not gonna lie to me. This is much bigger than I normally do for a swatch, but I think this is pretty true and I like this fabric. I don't want to knit it on a larger needle because I don't want the fabric to be super loose. This is two strands of unspun yarn and I just think if it's any, a whole lot looser than this, it's going to pill really bad and it's going to be really delicate and that's not what I want for what is essentially an outerwear piece. So I'm trying to decide if I just knit the size that I was originally going to knit and just have it with less ease or if I go up one size and kind of fall in between I think if I go up one size, I will still not quite be at the recommended ease, but closer to that. I think that's my current plan is that I'm just gonna go up from knitting the medium to knitting the large, and it will give me somewhere around the ease of the size small for me. Um, but I really like the fabric. I really like this yarn. It knit up really nicely. It's so lightweight. It smells so sheepy. Well, I've washed it, so it's not as sheepy now, but it's really lovely and that will probably be my next cast on once I finish my slip over. Um, but we'll see because again, my life is about to change. So we'll see how much knitting time I have. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have to chit chat about today. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, I don't know if I'll be able to post another video this month. If so, great. If not, don't abandon me. Um, I will probably do an update on Instagram. If that's something you're interested on, you can follow me there. It's the same handle as it is here. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed my knitting so far and baby knits and maybe I'll cast on a few more things. But um, in the meantime, I'm just gonna be taking a lot of naps and <laughs> making sure that everything's ready to go. So, and doing some knitting. So if you wanna see more from me, again, follow me on Instagram. I'll probably do some updates there. And that's really it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely February and I hope I will be able to chat with you again soon. Um, we shall see. So stay tuned and I will talk to you again in, another, in, another, in my next video.